the students are going to get back into their design teams from yesterday and they're going to have a new challenge. So in the previous lesson, what the teams did was design a structure that was made out of spaghetti and marshmallows. And the challenge there really was to work with fairly weak materials and strengthen those materials through their design choices. Today, we're going to focus on the materials themselves. So they're going to have another design challenge. The variety or the thing that we're mixing up a little bit this time is that each group is going to work with a different set of materials. So group one is only going to get straws and clear scotch tape. Group two is going to get uh, wooden craft sticks or popsicle sticks and air dry clay. Group three is going to get uh, pipe cleaners and string. They'll also have scissors they could cut the string with. And group four is going to get aluminum foil plus paper clips. So this is going to be like the metal group. Um, if you have binder clips, small ones that you want to let them use, you can. If you don't, that's fine. As long as they have the aluminum foil and the paper clips. And group five is going to have um, masking tape. And they're going to have any kind of recyclable paper that you have readily available. So printer paper is fine. If you have newspaper, you can use that too. But they're the paper group. So these are the only two materials that they're going to have. Um, so what's going to happen is they're all going to have the same challenge with the same constraints but completely different materials. By the end of the day, you're going to have all the groups share out. They're going to talk about the properties of the materials that they worked with and then share any of the benefits that those materials had or any of the constraints or problems that those materials created. And um, that will kind of get them thinking about what kinds of materials they're going to want to use for their final engineer, engineering design challenge, which will happen in the last four lessons of the unit. But again, these are the materials, and that's the focus for this main activity. So the groups are going to get started, and as they get started, you want to ask them several questions that remind them of the engineering design process. So what's the problem? The problem is that they've been asked to design a structure that's going to be at least 30 centimeters tall, which is about the height of this ruler. Um, it has to hold the weight of one of these sandbags, which we've been using since the previous lesson, and it has to withstand a shake test. Um, where we're going to shake the table and we'll, we'll show you how to do that in a bit uh, without toppling over. And the fourth constraint, which is different for all of the groups, is that they have to work with only the materials that they're given. So we pretended to be the group that got pipe cleaners and string. So as you walk around the classroom, you have to ask them guiding questions that review certain concepts from previous lessons, but also have them make predictions and observations and explain the choices that they're making. So if you come to this group and you see they've built this tower, you can say, well, what did you notice about the properties of your materials? So what are the properties, Leslie, of pipe cleaners and strength? Really flimsy. So Not really? stable at all. <laughs> Not stable, really flimsy, but I just bent it. What did they do? It stayed. That shape. Like, yeah. So what's one of the benefits of using pipe cleaners? You can bend it into the shape you want it? Yeah, you can bend it into the shape that you want. And the, the science -y word would be it's malleable um, and it's going to hold its shape. But if the kids just say you can bend it into whatever shape that you want, that's totally fine. And that is a benefit when you're building. Why? Because you don't want it to be to change on you. You want it to be a shape. Yeah, you want like, to <laughs> form it into a shape and then have it stay that shape yeah. <laughs> pretty much. And it's pretty easy to do, right? Do you know what pipe cleaners are made of? No. Inside, it's very, very thin um, strings of steel. So what this group probably thought when they got pipe cleaners and string was that they got the worst materials because they're super, uh, like Leslie said, flimsy and super flexible. Yes, you can bend them into nice shapes and everything, but they probably thought there's no way that's going to hold up its shape. But 
We talked about reinforcing shapes and using strong shapes in the previous lesson. How can you make this one flimsy piece of pipe cleaner stronger? Keep folding it in half. Or Keep folding it in half? Twisting Do that. It. So she's folding it in half and folding it in half again. And also twisting it. And then you can also twist it. And that's actually what a lot of building engineers use for suspension bridges. It's actually lots and lots of twisted um, steel cables, and that's actually super, super strong. So you're not going to tell them that. You can keep asking them questions, and if they figure it out, they figure it out. But yeah, you can always make something stronger. And for us, we had the pipe cleaners, which are actually like steel cable, and we twisted them into stronger, stronger pieces of um, pipe cleaner. So this is another shape. Um, what's the problem with our with our structure so far, Leslie? <coughs> what do we already know it's not going to do? Hold up the weight. <laughs> it's not going to hold up the weight, really. Well, we haven't finished it. We're gonna we're gonna add more to the top. So, um, well, we also had string, which we just couldn't figure out what to do with this. So, we're not using our string right now, and <laughs> that's fine for the students. So, um, it's not going to hold up the weight. Is it going to stay standing? It looks like it. Yeah, it'll stay standing. It won't hold the weight. So how can we make it stronger? Do you remember what we did in lesson two when we talked about strong shapes? What's the strongest shape? The strongest shape is um, a triangle. So, oh, yeah. so how can we add triangles? Well, we already made it kind of a rectangle at this point. So how can we add triangles to it? Could we add the... Bridges, or like the ones that connect like that. Mm -hmm. And so the ones that connect like this, that cross, are, are called cross braces. So we could add braces. So let's add one of the, let's add those. And um, symmetry also makes a structure stronger. Is our structure symmetrical? Okay. So this part <laughs> of it is symmetrical. Some of our, some of our braces are not symmetrical. So that's something that we could fix. So if you're seeing that the kids are, are um, you know doing a good job but they can improve somewhat you could ask them questions to fix it so we're going to try to make it more symmetrical we're also going to add cross braces so we're going to do that um, so giving them the independence to kind of figure things out on their own but also asking them guiding questions as we go so well, let's try to make this symmetrical. very malleable it's staying in the shape so we just wrap it around itself it stays like that we could trim it later is it stronger <gasps> It's already stronger! I have them make observations as they work. You know, when they add a brace, or we only added half of a brace on each side, is it stronger? And it actually is. It's wobbling less now. Now that she's making it more symmetrical. <laughs> it's wobbling less now. And also, um, bring in other terms from lesson two. It, wow. Um, no joke, we're not faking that. We're actually really wowed right now. <laughs> um, use other terms. So. This one right here, we'll talk about tension, and tension is the stretching of a certain material. I feel like there's a lot of tension on this one, and it's kind of stretching it. I feel like that one's not, I think no. you need to fix that one. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to add the cross brace, which is just forming the X. So when you add the cross braces, you're adding triangle shapes. If you look at that X, it's just four triangles. And cross bracing is one of the techniques that a lot of engineers use to reinforce buildings for earthquakes. So even though they're using spaghetti and pipe cleaners, they're still technically using the design techniques that engineers use. And more importantly, seeing for themselves, like hands on and in front of their eyes so they can make observations that it actually makes it stronger. So already it's stronger. We um, increased the tension on this one. We made it more symmetrical. Do you want to add okay. your, your, your last cross brace? And just adding it to two opposing sides of our structure already made it stronger. So you could ask them, well, should you add it in other places? And yeah, we'll add it to the opposite side. And it's a long process, but we probably worked on this five to eight minutes before um, we started filming and then we'll continue to work for another 10 minutes or so. And remember, they're going to have four people on their team, so they're going to have more minds. And already, 
it's shaking a lot less than it was before. So we're just gonna add one more set of cross braces and then we'll see how it goes. Here we have, we worked on it for another about eight, 10 minutes. This is our <laughs> tower. Um, I don't know if you remember before, but it was really, really wobbly when we were initially shaking it because we hadn't added all the reinforcements yet. But we added reinforcements. We added three sets of cross bracing um, on every single side. It's not perfectly symmetrical, but it's pretty good for 20 minutes of building. Um, we added some just horizontal braces um, at certain levels as well. And then we added a final brace across the top. Uh, it's not 30 centimeters, it's about three centimeters short. So we're just gonna give it a <laughs> little, <laughs> we're gonna give it a little bunny ears. Technically, the constraints didn't say it had to be, you know, proportionally all around 30 centimeters. It just said 30 centimeters, period. So they can get creative with it. That's totally fine. That's not cheating. We're still within the constraints. Oops, I just tore off one of those braces. <laughs> there. That is definitely over 30 centimeters now. Um, and I'm going to, we actually never tested. We should have. We should have tested all along that it would hold the one weight. Leslie, do you think it's going to hold this? I think it's going to hold it. I, have, I think so too. We were, we were actually super shocked that we got it to be as stable as it was. Um, it's not pretty, but it's stable. <gasps> it totally <laughs> holds it. But there's one last test we have to do. What's that? So it has to withstand um, the force of an earthquake, which is a side-to-side -side shaking motion. So what you're going to have to do is, if you don't have tables that shake, like we had in our demo. Oops, oops. Careful. You can just put it into the plastic trays that you're going to be using for the rest of the lessons. And we devised a way that you can create a shake table without actually having to make the kind of shake tables they have in museums or labs. Just use tape. And this way, um, we're going to ensure that everyone is shaking shaking their shake table in the same way. Put two pieces of tape, uh, about one inch, one inch apart or two centimeters apart. Okay, make sure every group has it the same way. So this is one inch or two centimeters apart. And what they're gonna do to simulate shaking is just move it from one piece of tape to the other. So they're gonna move it back and forth one inch. And that way, everyone is shaking in the same way. Okay. So again, ours is above 30 centimeters. It can hold the weight of one weight bag, which is about 115 grams. And then we have to do the earthquake shake test, which is to shake it back and forth. And then it still has to stay standing and the bag can't drop off. Oh! <laughs> we should probably put a time limit on it. So 10 seconds and it's wobbly. It seems like it's gonna fall over, but it doesn't. So did our structure survive the test? Survived. It survived. It may not be pretty, but it's still standing. So um, after every group does their test in front of the whole group, so you're going to see the paper one, and you'll see the aluminum foil one, each group can present uh, what really was beneficial about their material or what was problematic or a constraint, and just overall the properties, what they think it's really good for. So if our group thinks that since these kind of bend into a strong shape, it's good for like making the braces, or maybe it's good for connecting things together, we can say that. And uh, again, we use this information for the last four lessons, which is the big engineering design challenge. So if you have an older group of students or a, student, a group of students that's just 
really good at this and they all pass this test with flying colors. You def technically have extra sandbags, so you have two sandbags per group and you could actually just combine group sandbags too and do one test at a time. We wanted to see if our structure would survive the test with two sandbags this time. Oh! <laughs> Apparently not. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> but um, we'll stack the sandbag. Shoot. The structure's falling. The structure's falling. <laughs> we'll stack it. Oh! So our structure only survives with one sandbag. 